Okay, everybody, uh, can we make a start, please? Uh, welcome to the public uh, lecture of the Innovation and Engagement Series. Uh, we're very, very pleased to welcome Professor Frank Moulart. Frank's uh, been an old friend of our, our school for many years, and uh, he reminded me this evening that uh, we've known each other for a quarter of a century, which is a rather long time to know someone and to be uh, occasionally working together. I haven't got time to run through all of Frank's CV because he's done so much, but I would, I would recommend a new book that him and his colleagues have edited, The International Handbook on Social Innovation, which summarizes a lot of what the work Frank has been doing uh, for many years with, uh, with his colleagues and academic collaborators around the world. And what he's partly going to talk about this evening is some of the work attached to this book. Uh, without a doubt, Frank is one of the world's leading experts on social innovation, and he has pioneered a lot of this work. So we are delighted to have him with us. So please join me in thanking him uh, uh, and looking forward to a good uh, lecture uh, this evening here in Cardiff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. But when you make me emotional, my IQ drops by 50 points, so you're taking a very big risk. But I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I will try to, to become serious and, and talk about a topic uh, which is on the display there. Um, social innovation at the crossroads between innovation systems and, and human development. It's work in progress. I usually uh, prefer to present uh, new reflections than to go back to uh, uh, old work in, in a way. Uh, for those of you who have looked at the so Social Innovation Handbook, it's like the sequel to Chapter 8 uh, of that handbook, which is a co-production. It's uh, Lars Hulgat, Bob Jessop, uh, Abdel Andush, and, and myself, combining different perspectives on how to analyze social innovation uh, from a, a societal point of view, if you like, from a micrological, uh, socially innovative point of view, uh, from a systems of innovation point of view, and, and the big question is, can you combine these different perspectives? The approach is historical, the approach tries to combine different spatial scales, uh, uh, but especially the approach tries to explain that it, it's not really possible to extend, to enlarge social innovation, uh, systems of innovation uh, models to, to social innovation because there is a big difference in ontology between the systems of innovation on the one hand and uh, the social innovation uh, approach, if I can call it that way, on, on the other hand. Okay, this is the abstract you, you received in the invitation and strangely enough I more or less stick to it. Uh, <laughs> I kept my mind under control in a way, um, maybe thanks to Terry who kept me on track this morning discussing the right things, but uh, okay. So the abstract, I'm going to read it to remind myself and to discipline myself. So many contemporary approaches to social innovation tend to read it as an extra dimension to innovation dynamics, for example, in, in uh, innovation systems theory. Um, and I disagree with this res residual approach, although I understand that residual can be interpreted in many different ways. So, but to keep things simple and to stay within time, I disagree with this uh, resi residual approach. And uh, I define social innovation as agencies and processes that are directly oriented towards human development. So if a community, a locality, a region pursues uh, uh, a better competitive position or greater social cohesion to become more competitive and more resilient in, in the big bad world and economy out, out there, that's a kind of, of a reductive definition of what human development should in, involve. So there are many more dimensions involved in human development uh, than just uh, trying to become competitive or become a competitive region through uh, uh, innovat innovative strategies, for example. So I will try to explain what the consequences in ontology are 
between systems of innovation on the one hand and so the social innovation approach on the other hand. I will try to explain what the consequences are for the research methodology uh, in social innovation analysis. This is the index of what I want to explain. Um, the pain of slow science. And for 25 years, uh, we have been working on, on social innovation from many different points of views. Of course, we always came late. Kevin knows that we always came late with the good messages because we thought if the work was not good enough, it needed more reflection, it needed more sharing, uh, and so on and, and so on. So today we are confronted with a literature that we find a little bit light literature on social innovation that we find a bit light because it separates, for example, micro uh, initiatives from necessary uh, social transformations in society because it doesn't take history into account because uh, uh, it, it looks only at part of the literature because our whole field, for example, has been excluded from the literature survey made by the Young Foundation, just to give an example. Whereas in that literature, in, in spatial analysis, uh, regional planning, and so on, lots of answers are given to the questions that the Young Foundation is, is asking it itself. Anyway, so it's the pain of slow science, but we have to live uh, with it because uh, uh, slow science is very interesting. You learn a lot and you don't fly over issues. You reflect on issues. You uh, try to find uh, resilient, if I can use that word, uh, resilient solutions uh, to scientific questions. Okay, so I think the index uh, is quite self-explanatory. I have to give a definition of social innovation, one of the many. Uh, then I go back to the literature where we started, which was economic growth literature that then developed in, into economic development literature, yeah. innovation as one of the, the cruxes of the uh, regional development uh, uh, analysis. What does innovation mean in the regional development analysis? What are the different uh, dimensions that are treated in uh, regional development analysis. And then the, the big question, how social are these dimensions? And how capable are these models of innovation to deal with social innovation? So that leads me into human development ontology. And, what, and finally, the which hopefully I, I will be convincing on these, what are the consequences of this different ontology for the analysis of social innovation? And what are we analyzing in social innovation analysis? How do we analyze it? And which uh, theoretical and ontological frameworks are, are we using? Okay. I can be very fast on this. This is basically what Kevin referred to, this 25 years of research on, on uh, local development, regional development, and the connection with social innovation. So for about 25 years, the networks in spatial analysis, uh, which I have coordinated, have done research on, on social innovation. Um, it was tough work very grounded work in a way. I mean, Kevin himself was part of SingleCom. Uh, where we had, you remember the, the discussions we had on what is social innovation? Can you give a substantive definition of social innovation or should it be contextual? Should it be historical? Uh, and so on and, and so on. So it was a very tough work, and, but very interesting work with the focus pendulum moving between projects from one project to another. Uh, from case study to theoretical analysis, from the localissimo, the very micro local level to the regional level, from local to European networks, from social innovation to social transformation. People telling us, for example, um, yeah, I mean, you're playing games on the playground, you're giving people a, a house to live in, but uh, the whole uh, the housing system is completely rotten and it's completely abandoned to the market, so shouldn't you also work on legal systems and on, situ on institutions that make it possible for people to have a kind of general access to social housing? I mean, the connection between social transformation and, and social innovation was uh, uh, 
questioned quite often in, in the forums we organized. So also the pendulum moving from normative to empirical perspectives, and several of you will catch me on that one. Let me say, well, isn't social innovati innovation as you define it, isn't it too normative? Uh, I mean, what happens to these nice norms and principles when you apply them in, in practice? The main question, the main answer I will have to that is that norms are also socially produced and norms are brought up by people for different reasons and people try to apply and implement these norms. So what is normative is at the same time very empirical. Um, micro to macro perspectives follow the pendulum. Um, individual to collective perspectives, the connection between collective action, for example, and people's individual lifestyles, and how can these be connected to each other. Um, pendulum going from um, policy to private sector, civil society perspectives, civil society uh, uh, sitting both on, on the private sector, because many civil society organizations are private sector organizations, but at the same time have very good uh, collaborations with, with the public sector, with the state sector. This is an overview of these uh, different projects. Um, I won't focus on that very much, but uh, uh, I could give you a figure, I don't have it here, that shows how the pendulum uh, has been moving across all these different dimensions, which were on the previous slide, across these different projects. Um, one example, for example, to, to show the dynamics of, of the network and the, the change in focus, uh, the first project was quite normative, it was part of the Poverty Tree Program of the European Commission. We were looking how local development could help to overcome conditions of uh, social exclusion in, in uh, ur urban neighborhoods. So two, three years we worked on that and then you saw the criticism and, and the self-reflection growing saying, yeah, but this is too normative. We have to understand better for which communities we are working, what uh, impact is of, for example, uh, the devastating impact is of the real estate sector in several of these communities. For example, in Baracaldo, what will happen to the derelict land where, where the old industry uh, was located? Uh, how is the control of that land having an impact on your opportunities to apply social innovation or not? So, people became much more grounded and material in, in, their, reflect, in their reflection. When I say people, they're mainly members of, of the network of, of researchers because there is a very strong continuity in the core team uh, uh, for each of these re regions. This gives you an idea on how uh, local development uh, was present in these uh, different projects. Uh, the timing has gone now, that, but you, you may more or less remember the, the sequence. The integrated area development project was very much uh, uh, focused on socially innovative development agenda at a local level, but situated within uh, subsystems of an encompassing spatial system. That's where uh, we started working with uh, um, multiscalar approaches within the regulation uh, approach. And Eric and, and I started uh, playing with uh, scalar dynamics and uh, uh, scalar politics in, in, in a way, and also trying to give a more political, economic analysis of, of devolution, which uh, was already going on at the end of, of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, when we started the first project, and so on. So you can, for each of these projects, get a sense of what uh, uh, the focus in social innovation analysis in connection with development analysis was, if, if you were interested. So this, this slide uh, transmits the message I, I gave in the very beginning, and the big risk of uh, slow science. You reflect, you continue working. Your outputs are sometimes a, a, a bit delayed in comparison with, with your results. And then you, at a certain point, uh, you become confronted with uh, uh, what we could call fast science. Uh, um, 
After 20 years of research, we had to read in a diversity of policy analysis studies that social innovation research is very dispersed and that it needs much more integration. I would not contradict that, but there is a lot of uh, uh, studies that were not taken into account in, in these surveys. Okay, that was point one. And where do we come from? Uh, it all started with local and, and regional development analysis. Uh, and we saw that in, in regional and local situations, uh, conditions of people were very uneven, that there was um, a very strong need for satisfaction of human needs that had not been satisfactorily been satisfied. Uh, which needs? That depends really on, on what cases we're looking, looking at. In our case, it were derelict neighborhoods, neighborhoods that were suffering tremendously from manufacturing, restructuring, uh, from uh, uh, the slowly emergent fiscal crisis of the state in, in the many countries we, we were looking at. But very important, and that's what we focus much more than most of the analysts of social innovation that are part of the fast uh, approach to uh, social innovation. Much more important uh, is the improvement of social relationships. I put improvement between single, in single quotes because, of course, it's a very subjective term. Um, it's about communication, solidarity, reciprocity, uh, shared values, association. What does improvement mean in that context? Empirically, we see that, for example, in all these neighborhoods in crisis, quite a bit of associations were built, networks were built in, in which local authorities play the role, in which citizens' movements play the role, in which unions play the role, in which local capitalists play the role. Uh, I mean, the Basque Country, for example, this is a very good, uh, is a very good example of how this improvement of, of social relations was necessary. Now, this improvement of social relations, in, depending on the case you are addressing, can concern a very small housing association, and saying, well, we, we are not very well in touch with the needs of our clients, the inhabitants of our social housing, so how can we try to, to build better communication? How can we find out what people really want in their houses? What are the problems with... Uh, uh, the house rulers, uh, call it in house reglement, as we say in Dutch, uh, the regulations that, that the inhabitants uh, should respect if they want to, to stay in, in the social housing uh, um, buildings and, and so on. This is a very micromiss micromissimo uh, uh, example of improvement in social relations. But of course, what matters as much in our approach, since we want to, to connect uh, scales and institutional dynamics uh, in, between different contexts and different policy settings, uh, we also look at social relations between policymakers and leaders of uh, social movements, uh, policymakers and, and leaders of uh, citizen networks. So you have all these different dynamics of social relations in which uh, communication, solidarity, reciprocity, uh, and so on, uh, is pursued. So that's a bit, if you like, uh, uh, an empirical approach to what improvement in, in uh, social relations means. And then, also very important, is the socio-political transformation, enabling the previous. The previous being the satisfaction of human needs, but also the improvement of social relations. Participation in policy making, so in policy building, association, democracy, and collective enabling of the potential to ennoble people. For example, in the field of spatial planning and urban architecture, um, organizing public, public meetings to accept or reject uh, a big new project is a very superficial way of organizing participation. In contrast with working together with a local community, uh, citizens, association, representatives of different uh, 
uh, interest groups in the neighborhood working together on a design for public squares, for service provision, and so on. Uh, really translating the wishes of the people, these different people, uh, through a participatory design process into a project that is acceptable for all of them, that's a, a counterexample of what uh, uh, real social innovation would mean in terms of uh, enabling the potential of, of people. Taking people seriously is a very, very important challenge in our, in our world today. And it's, it's one of the, uh, I would say, one of the greatest problems in our world is that people are not taken seriously. Uh, why do people vote on, on rightist uh, or nationalist parties uh, without really knowing what, what they stand for? Because they have been frustrated in, 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 in traditional uh, politics and traditional uh, political rep representation. Because they see, for example, that the welfare incomes are, are declining, whereas bankers uh, make increasingly more money and so on. So people feel they are not taken seriously. So an important part of, of social innovation, uh, as, as to this uh, third bullet point, is to uh, create forums, networks, and participatory mechanisms that make it possible for people to really voice what the real needs are and make sure that the real needs are uh, uh, respected in, in the political world. There is a tendency in the literature to identify social innovation with social entrepreneurship. And this is something I also want to, to deconstruct a little bit. Social innovation is more than social entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship embodies many of the features of social in, in innovation initiatives and organizations. But there are other than economic activities in, in human life. Biological, of course, uh, social, political, uh, artistic. Um, not all entrepreneurship is economic. I mean, social cultural organizations, associations, of course, they all have an economic dimension. You need at least the money to pay for the drinks uh, or to rent a room and so on. But their main goal is not to create an, an enterprise, not even a social enterprise. Their main goal would be to make sure that people can uh, uh, practice their culture, uh, can practice their culture activities, that people can get uh, uh, to know each other, can, can socialize better can get access to uh, uh, community gardening and so on. And again, um, there is an economic dimension to it, but it's not social entrepreneurship per se. Social entrepreneurship can be part of the story. This is a very important observation, I think, because we are too, today, I mean, this is a, another side remark if you want, today, today we are under very strong pressure to think in economic terms about everything we do. Efficiency, rational organization, uh, the shorter distance from A to B. I mean, maybe ecologically speaking it makes sense, but if it is only translated, if it's translated only in, in pecuniary terms, then we have a, a tremendous problem in, in terms of the, the the mental orientation of, of our behavior, saying that what does it cost? Uh, how efficient is it? How much time do I lose? Do I, do I lose time going out with my friends to discuss a new artistic project? I mean, notice the, the contradiction, but very often we, we act like that. I still have to do this and that, so I cannot see this friend. Or I have no time to write uh, a political manifesto because I have an aid journal paper that is due for next week. Maybe that political manifesto is more important for um, moving society or community in, in a particular direction. So the last observation here is that economic has many meanings. For example, depending on the type of market you are operating in, the allocation system, the organization of this. Today we have all this whole discourse that things, activities, allocation should go through the market. But I mean, those of us who have been trained in, in institutional economics, for example, know that the market does not exist. 
if you have read Polanyi, you know that the market doesn't exist. It's, it's socially constructed, socially mediated, and so on. So again, if we could change our mindset and say, well, OK, there is the global market that becomes uh, increasingly influential, but we still have the liberty to create our own markets, our own allocation systems, to do our own things. Only we need the creativity and the imagination to uh, define the space in which uh, these other markets can further develop. OK, so referring back to my trajectory, uh, analyzing local development, regional development, uh, I mean, there is also a whole theoretical evo evolution which we have shared, many of us, and, and I will brief briefly go through the, that evolution. Uh, it's just the buzzwords and the main concepts, the main orientations. I don't have more time. So first of all, there is from economic growth to economic development, hmm? theorizing, analyzing, setting up collective action and public policy to foster local and regional development have preoccupied spatial analysts for a very long time. In fact, the history of institutionalism in social sciences and humanities parallels the development of thought and practice in local, regional, and national development. We can go back to the German historical schools from the mid-19th century on. And, and, uh, a la limite, you can, always, you can also consider uh, Karl Marx as a child of, that, of, of the, this whole intellectual tradition, but also Max Weber and many, many of the regional economists uh, uh, of the beginning of the 20th century, many of which uh, um, fled to the US, I mean, because of political circumstances, and have had quite a bit of influence also on, on the first generation of, of regional scientists. Um, it's important to see how um, the evolution in thinking in, in regional, local growth and economic development has, has taken place. First of all, there is the uh, and for those of you who are not economists, I will go fast. It's, it doesn't matter too much. I, it's just important to understand the criticisms on, on those models. From neoclassical to neo-Keynesian growth models was, was a first step. And neoclassical was just about, yeah, you have capital and labor, and depending on the, 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 the price of the factor, the production factor, you will have uh, uh, different allocation in different places, different regions. Then the neo keynesians brought in the demand side as a very important part, uh, and demand management. Uh, um, so for regional science, it was especially Harry Richardson who uh, translated uh, regional growth theory into a spatialized version. Um, the first criticism on, on this approach was uh, that in those models, technological innovation was completely exogenous. There are nuances, and, but it's not a, a course in, in regional growth theory here. So technology was brought in, and if you could bring, bring in a more productive technology, then you could get uh, a better growth performance and, and, and so on. So one of the contributions by, by Krugman and many of his colleagues was to uh, develop an endogenous growth theory in which uh, factors of innovation were brought in, but only measurable factors, uh, like, for example, uh, human capital, uh, um, maybe also, yeah, there are also some models br that bring in institutional uh, uh, capacity, the, the quality of social capital, and so on that were brought in into uh, these uh, um, renewed versions of regional growth model. That was a step forward, but it remained a black box in a way because uh, there was nothing said about the behavior of the agents that were really responsible for innovation. So major criticism too, the black box of collective innovative, innovative, <laughs> innovative behavior uh, in, in growth models is filled by the regional systems of, of innovation. Uh, culture as a major ingredient of the territorial innovation models, which I, I mean, I've made a comparison uh, in, in one of my most cited articles in, in, in regional studies that showing that culture was really uh, introduced by uh, um, those people and man, many others in, in regional uh, uh, innovation systems, 
And that, that was really a major step forward because it was also a possible stepping stone to bring in other dimensions of uh, uh, human development besides or in addition to uh, uh, economic and technological dimensions. But then, of course, there is a major criticism tree um, that growth is still not development. Uh, and we have Mirdal, of course, but many others uh, uh, who put a very strong stress on the importance of st strategies and policies to overcome uneven development, to flatten out uh, unevenness in, in uh, um, income distribution am among regions, we wealth distribution re across regions, uh, capital investments uh, across regions. And then the last step and that I will deal with uh, indirectly is then the endogenous uh, regional development literature uh, of which the territorial innovation models, uh, industrial districts, learning regions are part. These stress much more the role of culture, I already mentioned that, but uh, also governance, networking, uh, and, and so on. So it, it looks like uh, the world of the regional and local growth models have come to life and we, we are now in a position to recognize different agencies, different institutional dynamics, the role of building a, a shared culture uh, that is beneficial to uh, the development of our region and our locality. Um, there is still then no mention of social innovation uh, except in, in the very last uh, contributions in the Framework 6 programs, I think, uh, but I'll, I'll come to that in, in a second. Okay, so how do we move from there to, to, towards, uh, towards human development? So the broadening of interests from more equity uh, in spatialized economic development to a wide range of human development uh, um, dimensions probably, reflects again a long history of development of theory and practice uh, focused on development in both the north and the south, peripheral regions, uh, winning regions, losing regions, uh, and, and so on. And these issues that are addressed in this uh, uh, more development-oriented literature, they range from basic needs to education, human freedoms, identity building, and bottom-up governance. Here we come very close to the concerns of social innovation. So where does social innovation fit in? It was rediscovered, but I do, I do not develop this in this presentation. It was this rediscovered as a term and a concept from the 1970s on emancipation movements, social movements, community development, neighborhood development, and, and so on. The term itself is, goes back to the 17th century. Uh, it's older than technological innovation in a way. It's not older than innovation. And it was, it was a very controversial term. I mean, it was in some, uh, in some uh, environments, it was considered as a term that would only fit them out of socialists and, and revolutionaries and, and so on. Later on, it was much better accepted as uh, a reformist uh, view on how society can change. But I have no time to go into this. Okay. so. Social innovation. What is, in my view, or in the view of the networks that have contributed to this book, the ontology behind uh, social innovation? In many respects, uh, I have to stick to my slides, otherwise I, I will not. Uh, in many respects, the revival of the concept of social innovation in the post-war period was motivated by opposition to the concept of technological innovation and its hegemonic status in economic, social, and political discourse. Not that social innovation was against technological innovation, but social innovation, the way we see it, wants to see technological in innovation integrated in, in a human development perspective as a whole. So social innovation oriented uh, to human development is not concerned primarily with business innovation, and the modes of achieving it, but with recognition, recognition of the diversity of human needs 
uh, that must be met for human development to, to materialize. And these were apparent in the 60s, the whole emancipation movement, uh, so, les innovations sociales, uh, in very strong movements in, in Paris, in Germany, and so on. Um, the whole, the um, women's liberation movement, uh, sexual freedom, uh, democratization of uh, education, and, and so on, was all analyzed under the label of Innovation Sociale in France, and there is quite some literature uh, on, on, on that topic. Um, in the 70s, 80s, uh, it was uh, the reinvention, if you want, of the solidarity economy because of growing needs that were uh, uh, insufficiently satisfied by the public providers, service providers, and today, of course, uh, uh, you can fill in the picture yourself, financial crisis, banking crisis, uh, uh, the uh, absolute refusal for, to, towards redistribution of income and so on. And you could call this a very strong statement, but uh, yeah, I mean, with a different fiscal policy, uh, a lot of the problems at the lower end of the, of the income scale could, could be solved. Okay. So back to where I uh, first defined social innovation. Social innovation research aims to promote innovation in social relations and socially innovative strategies to promote socially innovative strategies in various spheres of society. Okay, continuing a little bit on, on this uh, social innovation on, in human development ontology. This could also be written under the title of a systems uh, innovation perspective, the first bullet point, if you like. And if you, maybe the, in that literature there is less stress on the co correlative human capacities for social transformation. Well, I suppose there is. Um, social innovation requires a... Co co the, the ontological perspective of, on social innovation re requires a corresponding epistemology sensitive to inevitable dialectics of struggle between forces pursuing radical social innovation oriented towards social emancipation and those seeking to maintain the tendencies towards com commodification of social bonds. The replacement of politics by public management is a, 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 a theme on which Eric Swingedo focuses a lot. And the reduction of human happiness to efficiency. I was already trying to be a bit suggestive. The bonds with friends, I mean, it's, it's not efficient because we have to finish papers, we have to do this, we have to fill in our uh, accounting uh, reports and, and so on. So that Human development ontology on which uh, social innovation approach is based addresses the multidimensionality of human existence and reproduction, the deep desire and existential value of solidarity, communication, diversity in creation, and creativity, association, and reciprocity in continuous conflictive uh, conditions. You would say, well, Mulat, you're dreaming. No. If I look at all these associations, bottom-up uh, uh, networks, uh, uh, community gardening, uh, community-based agriculture, um, squatter movements, uh, and, and so on, they all correspond to this deep desire and existential value of solidarity. I mean, initiatives of this kind are mushrooming all over. Social innovation analysis, our way says we recognize them. But we also, we recognize them, we analyze them, but we also analyze the way they serve as catalysts for social change, for institutional uh, reconstruction. For example, one of my students, uh, master students, has been working on the squatter movement in, in Brussels. Well, one of the things the squatter movement in Brussels is doing at the same time as solving day-to-day -day, uh, housing problems for people is really blueprinting in interaction with the responsible agencies a new view on social housing policy in Brussels. So this link is extremely important. So we're not just looking at 
solving day-to-day -day problems because the welfare state doesn't func pro function properly anymore, but we're also criticizing the welfare state and uh, putting forward ideas on how, uh, at the institutional level, at the more structural level, things can be changed. Now, systems of innovation, to what extent can... I'll be 10 minutes over time. It's, I mean, still have five minutes, I think, so... I think I need 10 minutes. That's what I wanted to say. I'm very bad in, in figures. Systems of innovation. To, to, what, to what extent they embody the social, social innovation ontology? I mean, with, to the, together with Abdel Amdouche, we did an overview of uh, systems of innovation research that was funded under the four the fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, EC framework programs. And, I mean, we have been part of at least one of those projects. And Kevin should have been part of several, I guess. Or it has been significant evolution in understanding the process nature of innovation systems, the role they play in economic development, and the role of culture in these innovation systems. So, Within this processual approach, room has been created for studying innovation processes as a dynamic interaction within, between a multiplicity of agents uh, and between a, a multiplicity of beha behavior criteria. Um, have been looking at and developing new ways to look at norm systems and how they uh, affect the reproduction uh, of agents and institutions, patterns of interaction between agents and institutions, learning and adaptation, I mean the learning region, including internal and external selection mechanisms and processes with significant culture mediation and signification. Although that was, the role of culture in, in the different projects was very uneven. Some just used culture as a variable, others looked at the, the way uh, there was a culture of change and analyzed the different dimensions of these uh, cultures of of, of change. Now, because despite these models, strong focus on and all these uh, improvements, uh, despite all these meaning, meaningful steps, I have to shorten it a little bit here and refer to the chapter, chapter eight in the book. Um, despite all these meaningful steps in innovation analysis, the ontological basis and epistemic underpinnings needed to lead social innovation analysis are missing in this system, innovation systems research. Um, why? Because social innovation research starts from a social ontology that considers society not as a pre-griven social reality. Kevin would say, well, none of these innovation models does that either. But uh, as a horizon of, horizon of action defined by one or more competing social imaginaries. Now, the competitive locality is part of those social imaginaries. It's one of the, the pieces of it. But there are many others, as I suggested a few minutes ago. There is the desire to have a more cohesive community. There is a, the desire to make sure that all citizens, migrants in a community have decent housing, decent education, access to welfare. There is a desire for uh, ecological quality, which is... Uh, a trans-class concern that is, is, is not addressed uh, in the ontology that is behind uh, the, the, the systems of, of innovation models. So where lies the value added of proper social, social innovation analysis? I mean, the ontology of development is, is wider, is more multidimensional, goes back to, oh, was I to the guts of being human and to the guts of being social, which has to do with needs, which has to do with social relations, which has to do with uh, capacitation, empowerment, building a polity that could take care of uh, qualitative social relations, which would then be helpful to satisfy the needs we seek to satisfy. I'm coming to the end, Kevin. So, um, what are the epistemological and methodological challenges uh, for social innovation research in order to be better to address human development issues than systems of innovation theory? Epistemological, so what research questions do we address? Which methods do we use uh, to, to address these research questions? 
So three questions here. Uh, what do we research? What do we examine in social innovation? How do we research uh, social innovation? And within which ontological and theoretical framework do we use? And, and yeah, anyway, something is wrong there. Let's start with the latter. But of course, uh, the mission is to bring the three together. Here you can read some of the elements I mentioned before. Um, there are still some uh, um, foci added, if you like, and social change and transformation through a diversity of practices and processes at different scales and within different spheres of so society. Does that mean, for example, that when you look at an association that you have to build this grand story and put the association within the grand story? to understand the, the proper social, social innovative meaning of that association? Yes and no. No, you don't have to give the whole story. Yes, and I'll come to that, there is a kind of a framework which uh, uh, refers to different dimensions of social innovation from the different perspectives I mentioned before, which have to be checked off. You have to know if an association has a political meaning right now, or if it could have a political meaning in the future. So social innovation cannot be done under a microscope for the relations between even the smallest innovative initiative and its embedding society or economy should at least be suggested. You have to question at least uh, uh, what you should examine when you look at a particular initiative. And to this purpose, we traditionally use a meta-theoretical structure of society, which explores the different possible elements of a society and the links between them. In other words, the meta-theoretical framework, and I have published several articles on how you build such a meta-theoretical framework on, on how you use different social change theories and social structure theories to, to build such a meta-theoretical framework. I have no time here. But, the meta-theoretical framework should help to interrogate critically the relationships between the political ideological system, oppressive institutionalization and collective behavior, but also institutional opportunities for social change and innovation. Think of the example of the squatter movement I was giving. It should identify or help to identify and examine conditions to sustain opportunities for socially innovative strategies and development processes. How should the research be organized and legitimized to, how do we do research in social innovation analysis? This is more like a checklist, although um, it would stand the test of being coherent with what I said before. Um, the following issues need to be taken when into account, sorry, uh, when addressing a social innovation. I think Kevin will recognize quite a bit of the dimensions we were looking at in, in the Singocom project. Uh, the nature of the social innovation, is it an action, an initiative, a creation? Is it a process? Is it a network building? Is it really a movement for social transformation, for example? say that in many countries there is a movement of growing for uh, reinventing social housing. Constraints and opportunities for the socially innovative initiatives have to be analyzed. Um, and at the level of what we are analyzing, we should also try to re-equilibrate different pillars of, of human existence. Is it about closer to nature? Is it about closer to people? And does it have a political meaning? Uh, does my pub group uh, or my community meeting group have uh, in the medium run maybe an entry to, to, to City Hall? And can it uh, transmit a message to, to the, I don't know, the, the deputy mayor who is responsible for housing, for example? Different starting points have to be uh, taken into account. Um, different institutional structures also. Uh, was there a role for theory, ideology, discourse in the genesis of social innovation practice and process? In, in the cases uh, um, we studied in Singocom, we found that for many of them, ideology, uh, um, ethics, uh, 
um, solidarity-based philosophies, um, wider, uh, come on, normative systems had an influence on the very practical experiences that, that were launched. And there is a chapter by Flavia Martinelli, for example, in that book that explains that very clearly. Then the relationship between social innovation, social reform, and social transformation, on which I can unfortunately not, not develop now, is a very important one. It was stressed by Godin, or Godin in his paper, um, which is now freely available on, on the web, so I recommend you to, to have a look at it. But we also stress it, I mean, the Four Egos chapter in the Social Innovation Handbook also stresses the connections between social innovation, social reform, and, and social transformation. How do we research? Okay, so far from arguing that there is one absolute verity about how to lead social innovation research, based on our experience, we believe that the following principles should be respected. It's action research in most of the cases. Um, in Singocom, for example, we worked with uh, uh, um, citizens, migrant organizations, social organizations uh, uh, active in the, in the neighborhood. We were still very modest from the action point of view there because these people were not really doing the research with us. In more recent projects, they are co-researchers and we are co-designers of change possibilities. Um, organize both research and action in a democratic way. Transdisciplinary action research. Transdisciplinary meaning cooperation between actors working in the neighborhoods, working in associations, working in the municipalities uh, with different backgrounds, working with them together with the researchers. Um, the special issue we did in urban studies in 2012 on, on problematization explains quite well how, how we can do that. Work interdisciplinary. The role of meta theory, it's back. Hmm? Uh, meta theory and theory in dealing with complexity, building a shared view of reality, which doesn't mean that we all should read uh, world systems theory from A to Z, but uh, some people should be part of what we're doing, telling, okay, but if you look at the capitalist real estate market and as it interferes in, in community development, you should consider this and that. So you have people with different expertise bringing in their knowledge and that knowledge is put together in a kind of a meta theory, meta theoretical framework that can then be used to ask the right questions. Um, I'm referring here to the Young Foundation report to BEPA of five, six years ago, I think, time is going so fast, where they really in a very undeontological way um, criticize social change theory and saying it, it, I mean, it goes in all directions. Basically what we do with social change theory and what the Young Foundation does not do is create a framework that allows you to put the different pieces of social innovation analysis together. And that's missing in so much of what we call the fast uh, uh, social innovation studies together. Last but not least, social innovation analysis is inherently reflexive in the many different meanings of the word. We think, we analyze how we are doing things. We examine if theories and methods used elsewhere in the past uh, are relevant for what we are doing now and why. So a sociology of knowledge approach can be quite useful there. But at the same time, uh, reflexivity is also about self-critical attitude of transdisciplinary research consortia. How do they work? We believe that our teams should work in a socially innovative way, that we should be democratic, that there is openness to decide on our methodology together, that we do that in cooperation with the partners in, in the communities, in the associations, in the municipalities we are working with. Okay, I think that's the last slide. Yes, not too bad, Kevin, I hope. It's, um, <laughs> too bad, okay, I take it. So social innovation is about improving social relations, satisfying human needs, building more democratic decision-making systems, and so on. 
these dimensions cannot be separated from each other, especially the first one is often overlooked in the fast literature. A second conclusion, if you like, going back to social innovation in society, taking a little bit of distance uh, from the uh, academic perspective. Social innovation cannot be separated from the wider, longer, and more pervasive changes and transformations of society and should be addressed as such. And the microbiology of social innovation analysis is nice, but insufficient to understand their societal meaning. And finally, uh, social innovation research should be coherent with social innovation ontology, it's human development, participation, solidarity, um, fighting exclusion, and so on. Um, therefore, social innovation research needs time, it needs sharing, in the sense I explained, it, it needs reflection, it needs human bonding uh, among partners in action research to overcome human bondage, if you like, and it's dramatically slow science, unfit for consultants and marketeers who seek to sell uh, social innovation the fast way. So there are a few publications and then uh, 